Hey everybody, we're back with the Level Up series and we're gonna continue our series on real estate sales funnels, websites, and landing pages. In the last video, we talked about how do you build one? What do you need in them? What are the key elements to having a website, sales funnel, IDX website, landing pages, and how to bring them all together because they're not competitors, they're companions. But today we're going to talk about in part two, how do you actually drive traffic to your real estate funnel and landing pages and even to your website. And so we're going to get started on that. A little bit of background if you don't know me. Again, um, I have over 15 years of experience in marketing, specializing in web design and SEO. And um, I literally, that's all I've done for the last, uh, going on 16 years actually, specializing in web design, SEO, and creating marketing plans for company. I've owned my own marketing company. Um, I owned Miff Media, which was formerly Marketing and Mindset. And I'm the co-founder of that. And then I'm also the co-founder of Kruvi Social, which is basically a social media content platform for realtors that gives you daily social media content and strategies that you don't have to think about. And, um, and so you can put your social media on autopilot. And I'm also a realtor here in Houston, Texas with eXp Realty as well. And today we're focusing on the traffic aspect because in order to get a lead, you have to get somebody to view your stuff, whether it's an ad, your website, your social media. So we're going to talk about that. And more importantly, we're going to kind of focus on how to drive traffic to your funnels and landing pages. We talked about before that your landing pages and funnels do not bring in traffic. They just process it. You have to send it traffic, unlike a website that you could have organic SEO which means that you're searching for a realtor near me, houses for sale in Houston, whatever it is, you're, people are searching for your services and then you come up on the search results of Google. And so um, that is usually somewhat on the easier side. Once you get SEO going, it's something that's evergreen and always going, but how do we actually send traffic to these landing pages and funnels? And so we're gonna start off right away with websites. So whether it's your website or your IDX website, you're gonna do this with local SEO. Now, one thing that most people get wrong with SEO, which is search engine optimization, basically getting found on search engines like Google, YouTube is actually second largest search engine in the world, Google being number one, but whether it's Bing, Yahoo, any search engine, you need SEO to be able to rank. And this is just basically the practice of these little tiny um, bots that crawl your website, reading the information, processing it, indexing and categorizing it. It lets people know, hey, when they search for this keyword, homes in Houston under 300,000, your web page is ranking somewhere in there. And that is what SEO is. And, and you're going to do that locally. And SEO is super important because this is organic traffic, which is free, right? We're not paying for this traffic. When people search, they're finding you organically, whether it's Google um, in Google search results or on Google business or maps. And if you're not, if you don't have a Google business page or which is now Google Maps. If you do not have one of those, go get one. And it, when I did a training about six months ago on this, there's a st statistic that says that 50% of business owners haven't even claimed their Google business profile. And why not? It's free. And it's the first thing that's going to show when you're close to somebody and it's going to show your reviews. That's how people leave reviews for you. And those reviews, believe it or not, are indexed and have keywords in them. So go get all of this free stuff because it will help you with your online optimization and getting found. And the reason why SEO is so important is because it drives a thousand percent more traffic to your website than organic social media. And with everybody jumping on the social media bandwagon, especially now with TikTok and short form video and um, even things like YouTube long form and um, all these Instagram and whether it's ads, you get a better return and you get more traffic with SEO because this is somebody where they've stumbled on you. You're not forcing an ad on them. You're not forcing a sale on them. It's just something that they've organically found and they're more apt to have their guard down and trust you. And you can do this pull marketing where you slowly pull them to you instead of pushing them to you with a sales strategy or forcing an appointment, okay? And then here's some more SEO statistics is 60% of marketers say that inbound, 
which is SEO blog content is their highest quality source of lead. Again, and the reason why, if you haven't watched previous videos on my YouTube channel, head over there. Um, I do a lot of training too on blogs because people just left blogs by the wayside. 10 years ago, when I was really into the web design and SEO, blogs were everything. If you didn't have a blog on your website, you were never going to rank because blogs are a great way to keep your website updated, which is what Google's looking for. Do you constantly update your website? Are you putting new stuff? Is it relevant? And blogs are a great way to do trending things, talk about the neighborhood. Because remember, there's more to selling houses that are more to real estate than just selling houses, right? So people want to know why should they buy a house on your side of town? Because houses and apartments and lofts and condos are everywhere. But why your neighborhood? Why your side of town? And that's where you come in by promoting the neighborhood, local businesses, restaurants, parks, things to do. And you can do this easily with blog articles. And it's a way to keep up lo local SEO, but also those keywords as well. And again, you're going to get a higher quality of leads because again, people are looking for you and allows them to keep coming back to you as much as they want with no pressure until they're ready to actually book an appointment and use you because you don't know where they're at in the buying and selling process. And this also establishes you as a trusted authority source as well because they can look at what you're writing, go fact check it. And if you know your stuff, then they're going to know that they can trust you as well. So SEO is one thing that you need to make sure that you have and just constantly by submitting if you only do youtube videos put your youtube videos in your kv core blog write a little paragraph or two about it link embed the video in there and now you have something to put your blog article and you should minimally be doing one blog article a week if not three to five times a week is optimal and with the things like chat gpt you can easily write blog articles i have a video on that as well where you can actually go through and create content on the fly that's quality and with little um, editing you can have an amazing blog so if you're not doing that it's something free just requires a little bit of time and you can even outsource that to a va or anything like that as well so the next step is let's talk about another way to drive traffic to our website and our funnels and landing pages. And that's with content marketing. So content marketing is super important because at the heart of every single digital marketing strategy or plan is content. If we don't have content, things to talk about, like what I'm doing right now, then we don't have any type of marketing. So content is extremely important. Most people think they don't want to get into it, but you're already doing it. If you have a website, you're talking to people, that's content. The critical importance of content marketing is that it connects and supports all the elements of your digital marketing strategy. All the things that you're putting should connect. If you're putting a blog article, break it up into pieces and record short form video. Take your blog article and make a YouTube video out of it. If you watch my website, you'll see a lot of my blog articles have a YouTube video with it. Why double do the content? You can take it and repurpose that content. So some ways you can do content marketing are with uh, videos. So again, long form and short form. So long form would be like YouTube. Usually over 10 minutes is what long form is considered. And then you have short form like Instagram, which is usually, I know they just increased it, it was a minute and a half. I think you can go up to three now. And then you have uh, TikTok as well and other platforms like that. And then the blogs, like we just talked about, if you're not implementing a blog, I cannot stress that enough go implement a blog. We all go search blogs. So if you're searching it for things to do in your area or researching things, imagine how many people are doing the same thing about buying or selling a home, especially when it comes to selling a home because they think they can do it themselves, right? Instead of hiring a realtor. So that way you can educate them on just how hard it is to sell a home by yourself. And then podcasts are another great podcast have blown up because podcasts allow us to repurpose content, right? If you record your podcast, now you have a YouTube video, or if you structure your YouTube videos a certain way, you can extract the audio and now you have a podcast and people love podcasts. They tune in more to that than music sometimes on the road or, um, you know, instead of the radio, just because you're able to learn as you go and you can pick those up. So podcast is another great way, very inexpensive to do. And then social media, right? Social media is another form of content marketing because you're constantly creating posts, stories. It's all content. Just like that song is everything is content. Everything is content. So start thinking that way. And then another way that we do specific content marketing 
is social media content. Social media is a powerful tool for driving traffic. We all do it. It's something free. If you don't have a social media profile, um, go get one. I personally, for my businesses, I don't have separate social media profiles. I want the person to connect with me. However, you can create separate ones. But it, these are free resources that you should be using. But remember with social media con uh, content marketing, it is a long-term strategy, not a short-term. If you need leads today, blogs, SEO, social media, organic social media is not the way to do it. You need to start it today. So six months to a year from now, you're getting consistent leads. And you can get leads quicker than that, but they won't be a steady stream unless you just keep going viral. But you want to do something like paid ads or some other type of marketing to supplement um, some lead generation if you really need leads right now. There's platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok. Now I need to add threads to this. Um, so there's all these platforms, Twitter, um, to target your ideal client. And think about those platforms too. If you're targeting, maybe your specialty is 55 and over, if that's your niche. Well, you're not going to take to TikTok, okay? Even though there are people on there 55 and older on TikTok, majority of your audience for people like my grandparents are going to be on Facebook, right? If you're trying to target a young audience, you definitely don't want to take to Facebook. You want to take to something like TikTok. You want to create engaging content, target, targeted ads, and interacting with potential clients. Make sure everything that you're posting has something to do with the audience that you're reaching. So, you know, easy way is if you're at EXP, EXP and you're trying to get real estate leads, but you constantly put in content that helps agents, well, you're not going to get leads, right? And vice versa. So make sure that your content is targeted to if you're targeting 55 and older, make sure it's targeting those communities and things that they're struggling with and problems you can solve and things that they're looking for versus your younger audience as well. And be sure to consistently post. This is the death for all real estate agents. The NAR statistic is 87% of real estate agents fail in the first five years of the career. And it's because of consistency. People start, I can't tell you how many times I've worked with clients. We've done a Facebook ad for a week and they didn't get the thousand leads that they had in their mind they're getting, even though we told them, you're going to average at this budget, you know, 10 leads a month, 15 leads a month. But if they don't get them all in that first week, they want to quit. So you need to be consistent with what you're posting, consistent with your content marketing, because it will eventually pay off. My dad would always say a blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and then. You can find a lead. Just stick with it. It takes time. And I know we all get that desperateness but you just got to be consistent with what you do. So if you're only going to post three times a week starting out, make sure you post three times a week. If it's just once a week, post that once a week, but make sure you have that minimum consistency that you set out to do. And then you can grow from there. And then again, everybody keeps, I keep telling you, 99% of people fail with marketing because they don't have clear call to actions. All of your social media posts should have a clear call to action. So if you're talking about check out that this is what $300,000 gets you in Houston and you're showing a property and you don't put a simple call to action at the end, they're not reaching out to you. They might just think that you're posting that. They might not know you're a realtor. They might not have went to your bio. So make sure that you put a clear call to action to see more homes like this in, uh, in the Houston area under 300,000 click the link in the bio, right? Or click this link. If you're on Facebook, send them to that landing page, capture their information, send them that list as well, or just have a simple follow me. Maybe it's a mindset quote that you're doing. You want to encourage people, put follow me for all things Houston and real estate, right? Or whatever area you're in, and then put your tag to follow so they can quickly click it and hit the follow button. Okay. But have clear call to actions, whether it's your funnel, your website, your social media, everything should have clear to call to actions that are leading to your website, landing page, or funnel, depending on the post that you're doing as well. So some quick statistics with social media. We're expected this year to reach 4.89 billion users worldwide. That's crazy. And especially, it, you might be somebody watching this from Mexico, Colombia, Spain, Brazil, Portugal, wherever. I can tell you, I've lived in Venezuela. I've lived in Mexico. Anytime you go to some of these countries, they don't always have websites. Sometimes websites are expensive to get done, but they stick to a, a Facebook page and Instagram. One of the recent things that we booked in El Salvador was we went to a coffee farm and the way we booked that coffee full farm was through Instagram and WhatsApp. They didn't have a website. And that's the way 
these countries do business. So if you're in those countries, focus on social media, but I'll have it go back to a landing page, a funnel, so you can capture their leads as well. And then the average user is spending 151 minutes per day on social media. And then TikTok, obviously we know is the fastest growing. It's grew by 100% um, uh, in the 20 and 2023, and it just continues to grow. So here's some more ways to drive traffic, some other ways to add to your mix. Once you've got the consistent blog, social media down, what are some other ways? Go to online forums and groups. This is a great way to get content as well because you can see all the questions people are asking, right? And so if we want to drive traffic to that funnel, you could go answer questions, right? And a lot of times they'll look you up or you can put, hey, I, I talked about it in this blog article or go post your blog article, you know, five things to do this summer in Houston for free, five kid-friendly activities for free. Do something like that that drives them to your website so now you're at the forefront of their mind about being a real estate agent. You could do online paid ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, all of those things. Printed marketing materials with QR codes, so your yard signs. One of my agents just put a yard sign in her yard that says, your, your friendly um, neighborhood realtor lives here. And has a big QR code and her number, and it's gotten her some traffic and just letting people know in her neighborhood. And it's a friendly neighborhood. She knows her neighbors. Hey, I'm a realtor now, right? So printed marketing materials, door hangers, all of those things. Sponsor events. Go sponsor a little league team. If you have a smaller budget, sponsoring little things is a great way to stretch your budget, get it out there and get in front of people um, that you normally wouldn't get in front of. Start having conversations and messages. You should be responding to all the comments, the appropriate ones, respond to them, and then message them and say, hey, thank you for the like, thank you for the follow. You know, um, as you can see from my bio, I'm a realtor. If there's anything that I can do to help you with anything real estate, or if you know anybody that needs help, you know, tell them your services. And then, hey, I would love to help them and be of service. Please let me know. So that's another way. Partner with local businesses. There's a couple ways you can do this. Partner with local business to promote them. Do a little, every time uh, me and my spouse go out, we record the place, uh, take some photos. We share it to Instagram immediately as a reel or a TikTok and uh, put it in our stories. And immediately it, the businesses are sharing that. Now we just got in front of five, 10,000 people we never would, got in front of. And they're promoting your stuff. And if you want to grow your social media following super fast, do giveaways. Go to a local restaurant, coffee shop, buy you know four gift cards at $25 a piece. Or if you don't have a small budget, go buy one gift card a week for $25. Run promotions and do the same thing everybody does. You got to like my Instagram and Facebook page. You got to comment below. Give this post a like. Tag three people. And it's a quick way to quick way to exponentially grow, especially if they know that you're doing, a, even if it's a small giveaway every week, people will show up to get that free item. And it's another way to support the local business because now they're going to promote you as well. Look for local publications. Sometimes these local magazines struggling for content, sometimes you can get in there for free, especially if you have a great story on how you transitioned to real estate or how you helped a recent client or you know, some inspirational story, talk to them, or you could take out a lo local ad with them as well. So those are some more ways to drive traffic. You just have to get creative and try some out for a little bit of time, be consistent with it and see if it works for you and move on. But these are great things to add as after you mastered blogs and your social media uh, content as well. So once we've dry, once we're driving data, it's super important to track your data because this is going to change how the wording on your websites, the photos you use, the videos you use, the content you post, everything about your website funnels and landing pages. You're, it's going to track um, by using something like Google Analytics. You're going to track the unique number of users. So how many visitors are coming to your website that are new, but it's also going to track the returning visitors. And that's super important. If people keep coming back to your website, maybe because of your blog, that's a great thing because you have a lot of returning traffic, but you should also have a lot of new traffic as well. It's going to tell you the traffic sources. Did it come from social media? Was it a direct link? Was it a referral? Was it a video search? It tells you what type of devices they're using. So uh, do a majority of your people use desktop, maybe because they're older and they don't like using phones, or maybe you have mobile use because 80% of people that are searching on the internet for something are using mobile devices. So make sure your website's mobile friendly. It's easy to see things. If you want to know if your website is mobile friendly, zoom out. And if you see a large website, 
in very small print, you do not have a responsive designed website and mobile friendly. It should resize based on the screen size. Then it's also going to tell them how long they spent on your website. This is super important because if Google sees a high bounce rate, so the higher the percentage, the that's bad, right? Because that means people are bouncing really quick. You want to see an average uh, time spent on your website over two minutes. If your bounce rate is high and it's around 30 seconds, it means people got to you by the wrong search results. So Google's going to start docking your SEO because they're going to say, oh, people, when they were searching for Realtor, they bounced after 30 seconds, they weren't finding. So maybe it's wrong location, any of that type of stuff. But it's going to let you know that, hey, when people have been on this page, they leave. Or So this allows you to get all the information you need to make adjustments to your website. And it's going to let you lo know location. Maybe you have a lot of people looking for relocation, a lot of California people looking to move to Houston, right? So uh, now I can target my information about California and relocating to Houston and California versus Texas, you know, uh, LA versus Houston, whatever those areas are, you can use that information for your knowledge. And then you're going to use Google Search Console. And there's plenty of videos out there how to set these up, especially with Google. But that's going to tell your performance, how many people clicked on your website from a search result, um, what keywords they, they found you with, how many impressions, how many times did you show up in the feed? And then how many times did they click your keywords? Are there any website errors? Do you have any broken pages? Do you have any content? Because they'll let you know ahead of time so you can fix that. Because if there's a lot of errors on your website, Google's not going to promote it because it doesn't work properly. And then once we have all of that data, we can analyze it, figure out what sources aren't working. Maybe you're posting a lot to Facebook and it takes time, but nobody's coming over for Facebook after a year. Well, leave it alone. Just focus on Instagram. It's okay to focus on one social media outlet. Just do it consistently. Who is your audience? Is it male, female? What age group? What locations? How long are they spending on your website, your funnel, your landing page? And are people returning? And with those, you can take all of that information and adjust because the whole goal is to get people to your website, figure out what is keeping people there, and then when we talk in the next video, we're going to talk about how do we capture the information because if we don't have this information correct, it's going to make our lead capture journey that much more difficult. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, again, uh, put them in the comments below of this video. You can tag me um, in YouTube at JM Shireman. Um, if you're at eXp, you can find me in the workplace. Um, if you're not with eXp, you can find me on jacobshireman.com, all of my social media is JM Sharman, as well as my YouTube channel, where you'll find other videos and more in depth on this topic. And uh, I hope you guys come for the next video because that's when we're gonna talk about how to actually technically capture leads into your website or from your website into your database, which is super important. And this is where most people struggle with is that technicality. And we're gonna go through that step-by-step. -step. Thank you.